McDonald. Bernard Hopkins will be decked out in the brown, as you see, and across the way, De La Hoya in black and white. Kenny Bayless calls the two combatants to the center of the ring, and we'll have this one underway for you. The Unified okay, Middleweight gentlemen. Championship. Bernard recognized universally as the okay, middleweight champion, but Trunks here we go. Right here. Any punch thrown in this area will be considered a clean punch. Trunks are okay here. Now, guys, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want you to keep the fight clean, protect yourself, and what I say, you must obey. Good luck to both of you. Touch up. All right, this will be interesting again. This is one of the problems for Oscar De La Hoya tonight is he's fighting a guy that's taller than him, and when he fights the tall guys, he has a little bit of trouble. But he's a master boxer, but this guy is a trap setter. He is a, a master boxer himself. He knows every trick in the trade, and his 44 victories. Remember, one of his losses was to Roy Jones Jr., and the other loss goes way back to his very first professional fight. So basically, this guy is 44-1, and one, even though the record's a little bit different than that. And he's a throwback in the sense that he has stayed in the middleweight division. He has become a force over the many years in this division, whereas Oscar De La Hoya has moved up from being a champion at 130 pounds. This is the natural spot for Bernard Hopkins. Bernard sometimes looks like he's waiting, but he knows exactly what he's doing all the time. He's a master ring technician. And Oscar has to deal with that tonight. Oscar a little bit quicker, but this guy knows how to roll with punches. He knows how to avoid power. He can give rounds away and still come back and get you. And that's what Oscar has to look out for. Nobody really opened up here. A lot of caution. He expected to be a chess match early. Nothing done in the first minute. Now Bernard goes head hunting. But Bernard does a lot what Oscar has done in so many fights that we've called. Bernard feels the guy out sometimes for two or three rounds. He, you know, so he tests his jab, he tests his hook, he tests his right hand. He moves back and forth, side to side, a master ring technician. It's a 12 round story, or a little bit less, when Hopkins fights. And the veteran fighters know how to relax early, try to make the fight come to them, set up the situation that works best. And Hopkins is a guy that. We talked about the traps, that's very significant. You have to hustle him, and here he mugs you. He throws a right-hand lead as if he was a left-handed fighter and gets away with it because he is so quick. Now he's a Philadelphia fighter, and he shows it. Talk about two nice kids. Bernard had problems early in his career before he really got into boxing, had to serve time. His guest in the state of Pennsylvania learned a lot while he was on vacation, and came out and he's a model citizen now and a wonderful wonderful guy and a terrific fighter Bernard Hopkins everybody knows about the golden boy a different upbringing 92 Olympics and he's a master boxer and a wonderful kid too the biggest difference between them is that De La Hoya has been getting his due since 1992 with the Olympic movement and all the titles Bernard Hopkins outspoken for many years about not feeling he got his recognition and it has started to come his way especially with the victory over Felix Trinidad. Well the local networks in the United States had him actually on their telecast when uh, Oscar De La Hoya took the title from Felix Thurman. Uh, we saw it afterwards when uh, actually he was praying that De La Hoya would win because he knew that this would bring him a lot of recognition too if he could in fact uh, beat Oscar De La Hoya tonight. But certainly the money is there as round number one ends. First round, there wasn't a lot between them, but he did find a home for more cleaner punches, I thought, than did uh, Bernard. But remember about Bernard, he's a guy that can mess around with you, make you look bad all the time, and then boom, all of a sudden you find yourself in your keys. And that's the way Bernard is. He has all the tricks of the trade. And he's so subtle. Oftentimes, it's hard for us to pick up what he's doing. And this is our business, too. He's one of the few guys that not only has power, but can make the waiting game work to his advantage because of the traps he springs. And it's a risky type of fight style. And you have to be an exceptional athlete to get away with it, which means that when you set the traps, you have to be successful a very high percentage of the time because you don't get that many opportunities. 
Bernard Hopkins to the right of your screen. Oscar to the left. Kind of with his back to you now. Bernard doesn't worry about anything. He does what he does. You know, when he feels the pressure, he circles away from it right away. Makes guys look bad. And he's just parring with his jab. He's looking to load up a big right hand or left hook to the body. Oscar smothering most of his jabs. And, and people getting a little antsy in the arena. Bernard tests his right hand here. We're only in round number two. Well, Hopkins will give you the impression he's not going to throw a punch for a long time. And then it might be a right hand lead, something he shouldn't get away with, and he'll start a nice combination for himself. And De La Hoya very aware of what this guy is doing. These are two master boxes, different styles of master boxes. Bernard will coast along in a defensive frame of mind, never pushes it, can go the 12 rounds. But mind you, in his 44 victories, he's got 31 knockouts. That's uh, more knockouts than Oscar De La Hoya has. But again, for Oscar, too, moving up to this 160, I don't think it's his optimal weight, and it certainly is for Bernard Hopkins. And again, we mentioned the age earlier, Dave. Hopkins is 39, but he's not uh, uh, an old 39, because he's never been beat up. He's 39 going on 30. Yeah. And for Hopkins, he was salivating about this matchup and certainly praying that Oscar De La Hoya would get past Sturm because he believed that Oscar has come up too far coming up from 130 and that his level was in the 147 to 154 pound range. So he intends to assert himself as the dominant middleweight, the natural middleweight here. And when we talked to Bernard yesterday, he was telling us, I've got to get angles on this guy and set him up to land a, a big shot. Now, Oscar lands a nice right hand of his own, but Bernard has found uh, his target. Now, Oscar threw six or seven shoeshine punches in the first one, and then he comes up just before the bell and misses his last shot. So, by the De La Hoya, the slow motion really showed it that we didn't, when we called it live, you can't really tell. But again, Hopkins rolling away, doesn't take the brunt of the punches, and that's why he can fight uh, into his 39th year. He told his mother that he was going to retire at 40, but we'll see. No fighter that I know of has retired, but he said he would. But Bernard promised his mom, I'm going to retire at 40. But again, Dave, this guy is not a 40 year old body. He doesn't blow up in between fights. He stays at the middleweight, uh, maybe five pounds, but he hasn't got to kill himself to get ready for fights, and he doesn't take any punishment in fights. Even in the Roy Jones Jr. fight, he didn't take it. And you like the fact that over the course of time, keeping the body that way, most guys naturally drift up a couple of weight classes, even if they eat their way up a couple of weight classes just by natural age. But he is a phenomenon in terms of his body, is Bernard Hopkins. And there's that right hand lead again from the right handed stance. You have to be really confident in your angle and your ability to fool your opponent to get away with that as a right-handed fighter. And he did. Oscar a little squared up at the shoulders. He's got the, the drive from the back foot to get his jab through there. And Bernard is the one that gets the angles down. Now he grabs him, pushes him back, roughs him up a little bit. Kenny Bailey says, don't do that. Keep your hands up and keep your head up, too. Halfway through the third round here in Las Vegas. Hot September night outside, but inside here, it's perfect boxing weather. I'm keeping him up, Oscar. Sliding around to his right, trying to get the angles as Bernard. This is going to be a chess match throughout. Bernard tentative. That's by design, by the way. He goes with the right hand lead that time, and that's why he was short with the jab. This guy doesn't miss an opportunity to do what he wants to do. Loaded up the right hand and took a bunch of shoe shine punches from De La Hoya. He'll make you come in and he'll work the angle on you, and he's patient enough, and then he'll spring the shot as you come in. And from the De La Hoya perspective, a more bounce in his step than in the Sturm fight. It, body looks a little bit more on the muscle 
And he looks fresher than he did in the Stern fight coming in against Hopkins, and he'll need every bit of that to do his best here because this is a guy who can exploit more opportunities than Sturm could. But you know, in the Sturm fight, that took place last June, and here we are in September, so you know Oscar didn't take much time off on just to win the third round. And that was a close round, but I kind of leaning toward uh, De La Hoya in that one, but I, you know, that's the type of round that the judges could have gone with Bernard just as easily. And Oscar, and since he's moved up in weight, is fighting an awful lot of close rounds in fights. It's harder for him to be dominant as he's not overpowering guys, so he's taking more to stay in the punching zone. And that's showing up on the scorecards. And the first few times he hits guys, he's not shifting them, he's not moving them, dominating them. But between rounds, uh, the riot act being read to De La Hoya is cornerman saying, this is the worst I've ever seen you. So he's really trying to rally De La Hoya, feeling that when Oscar gets in front of Hopkins, he's not throwing punches, and there's an illustration. Well, I think Oscar feels, you know, the power of uh, Bernard Hopkins. He's felt it on a couple of occasions here. And like when he fought uh, in the Sturm fight, he was a bit on the cautious side there and uh, barely uh, eked uh, out stop, a win. Stop, stop, stop and he's fighting in a bit similar way. But this guy that he's fighting now is a master, master boxer. So you always have to be cautious. And I think that's what Oscar's thinking. I don't know that, but I think that's what he's thinking. At least that's the way he's fighting. And uh, Floyd Sr. doesn't seem to like it. No, he's not getting enough situations where he's getting off first. There was an example where he did. But what Hopkins is doing on the countering side is waiting, landing a good shot, even a couple good body shots, and then tying De La Hoya up, limiting any opportunity for an exchange. It's, I hit you pretty well, and then it's over. I don't know what uh, Bernard saving his left hook for to the body, but, you know, here it is. Oski getting the best of this. Bernard, most of the time, has been head hunting, but, you know, that might be one of the traps he's trying to set. Who knows? But I'll tell you one thing. He knows what he's doing. Feigning, feigning. Oscar doesn't bite. A lot of strategy here. This is not a street fight. And a kid from East L.A. and a kid from Philadelphia. Some tough sections of some tough cities. Bernard's waiting a little bit too much here. And Oscar could steal this round from him. You know, it has been the Hopkins game to wait and then land the quick right hand. And the more De La Hoya gets comfortable with that pattern, he can try to break through it and get off first and punch through the target. Well, I think the flasher of the two fighters in the fourth round nice. as the bell ends. It's the unification of the 160-pound division. Bernard holds three of the titles, and Oscar De La Hoya holds the WBO version of it. The brown trunks with his back to you, of course, is Bernard Hopkins, reigning undisputed middleweight champion of the world. Oscar disputes that because he holds the WBO title. And one of these guys should be an absolute undisputed champion when this thing's all over. Work out, work out, work out. Round number work five, I'm the Colonel Bob Sheridan with Dave Bontempo. We're in Las Vegas, Nevada. Jab, jab, see that sneaky right hand uppercut, and then Oscar hits him low again. This time, though, Hopkins figured out the distance. We heard from the corner between rounds, you're getting closer with your jab, and that time, Hopkins got all the way there with his jab, and he came straight behind it with a nice two-punch combination. The jab is one thing. The sneaky two-punch combination behind it is what did the damage. You know, Bernard is so intelligent and knows so much about boxing. He could be doing things in these early rounds, trying to set something up for a round or two from now. That's how patient this guy is. Let and you feel confident about one particular yeah. area, make you forget about a body shot, say, or a hook and then make you pay for it later. Well, he tested his hook upstairs that time. Now he's hanging the left hand down. There's a reason for that. He wants to try to sucker De La Hoya in. He throws the right hand. Oscar's able to gobble up the jabs here. 
This is a better round for Bernard Hopkins. He's dangling that jab hand down low, hoping that De La Hoya lunges in. Well, this is part of what we call setting the traps for opponents. Nobody does it better than Bernard. Oscar moving back and forth. See, nice slick defense. Bernard Hopkins never gets beat up, even though this is a close fight. He doesn't get beat up. And one of the reasons is he shortens the fight. With the waiting, with the trap setting, a three-minute fight might really be a minute 40 of the round rather than three minutes. And because of that, it basically knocks about three rounds of action off the fight. And multiply that by fight over fight in his career. And he's preserved himself well there and put himself in favorable strategic situations. Well, there's, there's several things about Bernard Hopkins. Number one, he doesn't balloon up in between fights. Number two, he's a master boxer and ring technician. And number three, as you just said, Davy Boy, he, he really does shorten uh, fights and shorten rounds by doing exactly what he wants. I think this is a Hopkins round. Oscar staggered a little bit, and all of a sudden, Bernard jumps on him. I don't know if he tripped or got uh, on the end of a punch, but that's a Bernard Hopkins round. Uh, but his legs aren't bad. That he makes you think his legs are bad. Floyd knows that, but he's trying to give confidence to uh, Oscar De La Hoya. Uh, again, as I look at my score sheet, Oscar slightly out in front in this fight, maybe. And I'll go one more disagreement with the corner. They said it's easy. No, not against this guy. <laughs> it's easy from where you're sitting, maybe. But in a unified championship fight against a master trap setter, anything buddies. Of course, what they're trying to implore Oscar De La Hoya to do is, hey, you know, take more chances. Don't let him lull you into a slow-paced fight. And don't forget, Hopkins uh, defeated uh, Felix Trinidad, who uh, has beaten Oscar De La Hoya. So he won that tournament of the uh, middleweights. And he really has just started to, since that fight, capture the acclaim on a large level that had eluded him prior to that. He's starting to enjoy the limelight and being a celebrity and being recognized. And that is something, obviously, uh, that Bernard Hopkins covets now that he's finally gotten the love, so to speak, that he wasn't before. He had took him till he's... Uh actually 38 39 years old to get the respect he's having a nice round here so far at the midway point Oscar set up right in front of him and gets off the right hand and again he gets it off as Bernard's pulling out he got a real decent jab there that time Bernard will give you what you think you're taking see he goes with that sneaky right hand stop when I say stop gentlemen there we go Kenny in total command boy Kenny Bayless has come a long way. He's a terrific, terrific uh, referee now. Getting a lot more assignments in the Nevada State Athletic. Well, he's getting his point across, but letting the guys fight. He's not the story here. They're doing what he says, and uh, the pace of this chess match is allowed to continue, and that's what these guys are, are involved in. Boxing in the chess match situation set forth by Hopkins. Yeah, and Kenny doesn't, doesn't want to invade on that. You'll see him sometimes come in and think he needs to break it up. You'll see his hands go up in the air, and then he'll leave it alone. He'll back off and let the fight his fight. Uh, good instinct by our ref, as well as by both of these fighters. Man, oh man. I don't think Bernard's done enough in this round. You talk about patience. It's unbelievable. Look at this. Oscar showing the footwork. Bernard doesn't like being shown up like that. But that's a nice round, I think, for Oscar De La Hoya. Here comes the bell. That's it. That's well, they think he's out in front in the fight, but in reality, it's too close to call. I've got Oscar out in front slightly. Now, I'm a huge Bernard Hopkins fan. And we all love Oscar, so, I mean, we're not influenced like perhaps the judges are because we do so many more fights than they do. Well, in going back and forth, yeah, the corners are looking at the possible scoring based 
in terms of how their plan was set up beforehand. And in the Hopkins corner, they liked the fact that he was setting traps. And he's doing what he wanted to, but he's not taking enough initiative offensively if you're looking at it from the Delahoya perspective. Things are going well for him right now, though. And he has to turned it up a notch here in Oscar in uh, round number seven. <laughs> Oscar waiting, waiting, waiting. This is the only one. Hopkins to go with the jab and throw more right hands. He gets it on the chin of Oscar, but not with a lot of force. Watch how Hopkins cuts off a ring slowly and drives a back guy back to a corner. Maybe we'll get the opportunity to see that. He slices the ring up ever so slowly and into small pieces and little by little suddenly guides you back into the corner. You didn't even realize you were going to go there, and then he does his work. So, so slick at that. You know, he really wants to land the right hand, so he paw, paw, paw with the jab, bang. Or he'll go with the right hand lead and come back and nail you with a hook, either to the head or the body. This guy can do it all. Here the chank was up for Oscar, Oscar, in the western part of the United States of America, and not too far from L.A. and Stay La Jolla territory. The boxing fans in the United States, two of the biggest cities, in the area of Philadelphia, New York, Boston, they could be big fans of this man, Bernard Hopkins, out of respect for his style of boxing. See, Bernard tried to turn it up a little bit, but Austin's doing a nice job defensively right here with a minute to go. This is anybody's round. I think the separator here, though, is that Hopkins has been the more effective aggressor actually getting punches off because De La Hoya has been backing up and playing a little bit more of the waiting game. Yes, good defense, but the offense has been with Hopkins. I think this is his round to this point. I agree. With 24 seconds to go, it's his round to lose now. Jab, jab, jab. Was the right hand, Bernard? Oscar bouncing back. He hasn't taken anything hard yet. But again, remember, this is a guy that is in, he's testing things, Dave, that he might have an idea for the next round or the following round. <laughs> Setting traps all the time is Bernard Hopkins. <laughs> Bell ends, I gotta get that out in front, but just as easily, Dave, uh, some judges, because of all the close rounds, could have it one or two points the other way. So don't be surprised. And if it goes the distance, it'll be controversial again. As since Oscar De La Hoya has moved up from 147, a lot more subject to interpretation at 154 and 160 as he has to trade a little bit more with guys as the boxing you know, is something that he can't sit outside and control. The bigger fighters don't mind coming after him. And interestingly, they only told Oscar De La Hoya to jab. Nothing about the hook, nothing about moving. I just think that he can do it with the jab and set it up, but he needs to be moving. Now he's not moving at all. And Bernard will give him a feint, try to shift him one way or the other. Just get the feeling with Bernard, you never know. That's a very good left hook to the head. Hasn't gone to the body as much. Oh, there's a good one underneath the elbow. And I think Oscar felt the power. After the headshot, he starts with the right hand and finishes with the hook. And many fighters will start with the hook and then go upstairs. So he's using the hook at the back end of the combination. And it's uh, another part of his mastery. Bernard Hopkins having a good eighth round. Oscar waiting, I think, a little bit too much. I mean, Oscar probably can't knock him out, so he's got a box of them. And waiting won't help you with this guy. You gotta continue to try to outbox Bernard. But, you know, I'm saying that, but you folks who know boxing, know as well as I do that this guy is very, very difficult to outbox. And look at the jabs, jabs, jabs. Now the speed in much uh, more real time than it is in the gym, and you can't afford the mistake. And you also have to wonder about if the specter of the right hand by Hopkins and the fact that he has set some traps and landed some right hand leads has kept De La Hoya from moving to his left so that he doesn't walk into something. Oh, I believe that totally. Because he has been frozen by the idea of the right hand of Hopkins. 
And just when you think you get the right end of control, this guy can snap a left off to your head out of your body. Comes with a jab, jab. I think you have Bernadze boxing very well here in the eighth round. If it continues this way, I get this fight dead even going to the ninth. Now the crowd would like to see Austin doing more, but in reality, this is a terrific, terrific prize fight. I mean, two strategic geniuses in there. Now Austin lands a couple at the end, and that could influence the judges to go his way. But right now, after eight, I get it about even. Oscar hasn't fainted as much in this. And actually, in his last two fights at middleweight, he hasn't fainted as much as when he had Gil Clancy working with him. Bernard Hopkins has answered his feints when he's tried to do it in this round. He he knows all about those two. Hopkins saying between the eighth and ninth, he said, this is my round here, very confidently. Yeah, well, he's picking it up a little bit in the last couple rounds. Good uppercut by Bernard. Stop, stop, stop. Step back, fellas. Clean. Here we go. First 30 seconds gone by, and Austin's felt a little bit of the power in the last round and in this round for Bernard. If the fight's not even and De La Hoya's ahead, Bernard is certainly making him pay more now than he was earlier. The heads came together. Let's see what Kenny has to say. Stop with the foolishness, guys. Keep it clean. Keep it clean. Here we go. Hopkins is trying to mug him for a purpose, and uh, the referee does not want the mugging to include a head button. So that's where it's at for Hopkins as he's trying to do a street job on De La Hoya right now, rough him up. And that's not a bad idea either. Oscar much more tentative now than he was in the early going. As I say that, he gets off a few jets, but look at the Hopkins now as opposed to waiting and setting the trap like he normally does. He's much more aggressive here now. He sees something. And he cut off the ring on him as De La Hoya is trying to circle out of trouble. Well, he's a master at that. Oscar comes with an uppercut, does a body shot. Oh, he he really whacked him with that left hook. If that's on the liver, Oscar, the way he's reacting, he may not be. Oh, he's not getting up. It's up to seven and eight and nine and ten. Oscar De La Hoya is knocked out by a left hook to the liver by Bernard Hopkins. How about that day? We've it's seen a okay, jab and then downstairs. The second punch. And then the one after that. At the tail end of the combinations, he's finishing with the body shots. There's the one that hurt him. And then upstairs, and he's nailed him with that shot. And it was the second shot in the sequence, coming behind the jab. Quick left hand. Upstairs down. Bing, boom. Referee Kenny Bayless counts to 10. The bout comes to a halt at 1 minute 38 seconds of round number 9. The winner by knockout victory and still the universally recognized undisputed middleweight champion of the world. The pride of Philadelphia. Bernard, the executioner. Hopkins. Well, the